Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we live and garden here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today I am continuing to plant some of my plant stash materials into containers. Um, I want to get as many containers filled as I have uh, potting soil for today. So we'll see how long that lasts. So come with me today and let's see how, what kind of containers we can put together with the plants and the potting soil and the containers that we have. I have a collection of plants here um, from which to choose. Uh, first of all, I wanted to share that I already potted up this sweet little tuberous begonia. Isn't it adorable? I love this little container with the roses around the top. I think that the rose shape of this begonia just looks really sweet with this container. So I'm already really happy with this one. So I'm just gonna set it up here so that we can enjoy that. Um, so I have four of the Superbina white um, that I didn't use in my window boxes. And I have two of the Truffula Pink Gonfrina that I also didn't use in the window boxes. I have some winter sown Sweet Alyssum, both white and purple. Uh, there were supposed to be more purple over here, but they turned out to be white also. Um, I have three of these purple and bloom salvias. These are the kind that get to be three or four feet tall and two to three feet wide. Nice big plants in the landscape. I might use them in containers. I might use them in the landscape. Not sure yet. <clears throat> I have one each of a purple and a white double impatience. And these are going to be potted up into containers for our north side porch. Here I have a banana pepper plant and a cucumber. Now I'm not putting the cucumber into a container, but I might put the pepper into a container. I haven't decided yet. Now over in my plant stash, I do have a lot more things in seedling form. I've got dahlias, um, scabiosa, lots of basil. Uh, what else is over there? I don't, I don't even remember. Um, but these are the things that are the contenders for containers out front in particular, because do you remember that I painted my window boxes kind of a, not very bright, not very cobalt, but a very good looking color of blue. And so this container is gonna pick up on that blue from the window boxes. And so is this one. So it's a little dirty, but I'll clean it up. So I thought that these two containers would be good to put sun loving plants out in the front yard. So I've already started to put some potting soil in here. I'm gonna put a little bit of compost in just to enrich the soil even all that much further. And top it off with potting soil. Now I'm going to go ahead and mix in some flower tone fertilizer in here. You could use biotone, you could use plant tone. I'm using flower tone because it's formulated. It does have the biotone mycorrhizae and things in it for root development, but it also has a formulation for flower production. So Espoma flower tone, blossom booster. Why not? Right? It looks an awful lot like biotone. They are all really similar. Any of the Espoma products really, I guess the Holly Tone, Azalea Tone, those kind have extra things for acid loving plants, but otherwise you can pretty much swap out any tone fertilizer for any other and you'll be pretty much all right. All right, so I've already got that in there. Now I will be also fertilizing these with a uh, flower booster fertilizer, liquid, liquid fertilizer. Uh, on a weekly basis throughout the summer. Okay, for this one, I'm thinking that I'm gonna put Superbina here. One of these Black and Blooms here, and one of these Gomfrinas here. What do you think of that idea? I'm gonna give that a shot. All of these plants will grow nice and big. I did grow this type of salvia or similar, but I grew the black and blue salvia last year in containers. And it, it got bigger in the ground than it got in the container. So I don't think this one is going to totally overrun the container, which is good. But also I do think that it will fill in nicely. I'm gonna tuck it down in there. Kind of in the back. And then I'm gonna put the gomfrina off to one side. angling it a little bit out that way so that it doesn't have too much trouble finding a way to poof out the side here. 
And then finally, I'm gonna put this um, Verbena Superbena White out in the other section of the pot. Come out of there, you. There you go. And over here. So a little triangle shape made with my plants in here. All right, I think that over the course of the growing season, all three of these plants will fill in. This one will fill in and go down here with white. This one will go up with the purple spikes and this one will make a big cloud of these pink pom-pom flowers over here. So I think that's gonna be really nice, but because I can't leave well enough alone and I see bare soil, I'm gonna go ahead and take out some of these alyssas and stick them in there just for grins. Now this was sown in the winter sowing method, which means I just broadcast spread the seeds into this shoebox container. I'm gonna use the hunk of seed method to get them out of here and plant them into this container. I'm gonna just grab a section of plants, kind of untangle them a little bit. Like that. And I'm just gonna go down to the soil level and with my fingers, I'm just digging down in there and grabbing a hunk of them, just like that. And now I'm gonna plant this in here so that it comes out the side, just like that. Now, because I'm separating these that have grown into this tangled mess, um, I'm separating them. They're getting a little bit um, kind of loose and leggy looking as they come apart from each other. Um, but they'll fill in pretty soon. I could probably even trim them off and they'll flush in sooner. In fact, I will do that. You know what? I'm going to put these white ones over here. There you go. Like that. And then I'm going to grab some of the purple ones that are in here. like that. They're shorter. I'm going to stick them out here in the front. All right, so these I'm going to, let me go get my trimmers and do it right now. All right, I'm going to trim these off. Just give them a nice haircut and they will flush back out and be beautiful very soon. Might feel drastic, but really, it's okay. Those are gonna flush out and be gorgeous here in just a week or two. They'll be lovely. Um, and because I'm feeling like it, I'm gonna put some more purple in down in there. This is all the purple I have left, so I'm gonna split it into two pieces. Now you might think, but that takes away all of the immediate instant wow impact off your container. You don't have a big wow factor anymore. You're gonna have to wait a week or two, but really the health of your plants will thank you for giving them a little bit of a haircut now. As they get their roots established, they don't really want to be focusing on supporting all that top growth. So giving them a haircut like that will allow them to get their roots going and then they'll put out a flush of new growth and it'll be gorgeous. All right, so that's one container. Set it off to the side. All right, and then I have this other blue container. So this soil is used, but not terribly used. So I'm gonna add some compost to it to freshen it up and add some fertilizer to it, but then it'll be good to go. All right, I still have basically the same plants to work with. Now I have three of the verbenas, one of the gumfrinas, and two of the black and bloom. So, uh, I'm going to skip the gomfrina in this one. I'm going to put a black and bloom in the center and then ring it with the three verbenas. And just because I have it, I'm going to go ahead and put some of this uh, alyssum in there as well. And these are going to get a haircut also. All right, that's number two. So this will be a purple spike in the middle, which will grow into a nice shrubby sized bush. And then the white ring around, I think should be a really nice 
um, container. All right. Okay, I'm back. I'm a little bit cleaned up, ready to do the next thing. Now, I'm gonna set the gomfrina aside. I have a special plan for that that doesn't involve this kind of a container. So, let's turn our attention to these double impatience that I picked up on my recent trip to Frank's uh, produce and greenhouses and uh, one of them is white double flowered and one of them is lavender double flowered they're beautiful um, the white one is called fiesta bonita white and the purple one I believe was called fiesta sparkler you know what I don't remember I'll put it on the screen all right I have this container which is a brown terracotta pot I do have a saucer for it it's up the way and this is a container that I forced some hyacinths in and I have been setting this outside for a while so that the hyacinths could soak up the sun and uh, gain energy so that they can bloom again next year I'm going to transplant these into the ground just like I did the daffodils the other day um, and set them out in a place where they can soak up the sun and then come back next year nice and strong with beautiful flowers again and then I'm going to reuse this container for these impatience so I just have to pull these out of here And these will just go right in the ground, just like they are, until their leaves are yellow. And then I'll cut the leaves off and leave the bulbs in the ground. All right, there's a lot of hyacinth roots in here, but that'll just decay and become good organic matter for the plants. All right, now these, uh, the soil here, all that was in here were these hyacinths. And the hyacinths had all their energy and nutrients already stored in their bulb. They didn't really take much from the soil. In fact, as you know, you can make hyacinths grow in rocks or just plain water. So they didn't even really use those you know, nutrients in the soil. So I might add a little bit of compost to this just to enrich it a little bit and some fertilizer, but I think the soil can be reused without any trouble. This is flower tone fertilizer. You could use any sort of fertilizer like I said earlier. Kind of gently stirring that in. Incorporate it nicely. Turn some in there as I do it. There we go. And I'm just going to plant these two impatiens in here. They're in four inch pots, which are about three or four inches deep. So I'm hoping that this container is deep enough for them. There's a chance these aren't deep enough, in which case I'll decide. Ah, I think I'll be able to make it work. stems on these impatiens, as all impatiens, are very fragile, so you're going to want to take care to try not to break any of the stems as you're working with it. I have a little bit of these alyssum left. I'm just going to tuck them down in underneath here, and maybe they'll grow bigger and fill in. Maybe they won't. This is going to be in a full shade location on my porch, so I don't know what the alyssum will do, but I'll give them a shot anyway. That's the end of my alyssum that I grew from seed this year. And that container's done. Now I'm gonna be setting this on the side table under my covered porch in the backyard. I will certainly water this to clean it up a little bit. Um, so it'll go in the side porch under the cover of our, of our roof there. And so it won't grow incredibly fast, but it should, if I keep it well watered and well fertilized, it should grow there contentedly all summer long. Now, to take care of this last gomfrina, you have to come with me out to the front yard. So what do you guys think of this uh, placement here, of this urn? This urn came with the house. There used to be a pair, but it broke. Um, so this one is, I believe is concrete, but or maybe not, I don't know. But you can see that it is really pockmarked and aged. It's really old, especially over there. I mean, it almost looks like coral, coral reef. Anyway, I'm thinking that if this gonfrina lives up to the reputation, then it'll be this big pom-pom uh, mound of pink flowers here. And it should look really cute, I think, in this urn. Um, <clears throat> and I think that the lamb's ears around it will look nice and... Just a nice little vignette over here with the poppies and maybe the lakothwi 
if the poppies bloom, that'll be really nice. So yeah, what do you think? The explosion of bright colors in this garden is making me so happy today. I'm happy with the arrangement of these two pots. These are plastic, but they look ceramic. And the blue of those really picks up on the blue from the window boxes and all the rich blue and purple colors in the garden right now. Such a great color combination in my opinion. I'm really pleased with it. And uh, I think I have one more of these salvias left and I think I'm gonna plant it in the ground over here and probably surround it with some white um, annuals of some kind so that all through the summer we'll have that echo of the purple surrounded by white uh, over here as well. Oh, I also forgot to mention, right here I have some liatris planted. So after the allium is gone, the liatris will take over with purple spikes here. And then these are Montauk daisies, and they'll be bright white daisies with the purple liatris. And then if I put that purple salvia in here, and then maybe some low-growing white, maybe some vinca or... Um, I don't know, some other low, maybe even more of Verbena, Superbenas around in here. That'll be the white with the purple over here and then a different kind of white with purple over here. So maybe I need to find a reason to have a pop of this blue color over here as well, just as a balanced echo. Yeah, I should keep my eye out for something blue or maybe I could spray paint the same color as the window boxes, something that I already own. I'll have to give that a look. Good morning, friends same project next day. Um, I found an old um, flower basket pot. This was a hanging basket several years ago. It used to be terracotta colored. It's plastic though. And I got my spray paint out that I used on the window boxes out front and I made it the same blue color. So now I'm going to have a container to put on the left side of the front walk. In that container, I have one more of these purple and bloom salvias that's going to go in the center. And then I figured I could just use this Dusty Miller as a whitish grayish green accent around here. Now I also thought about taking apart some of my um, daffodil containers that I have up on the courtyard that have um, spent daffodils in them and then they have purple and white pansies in them. I could take those apart. In fact, maybe I should. Yeah, yeah. Then I could plant those containers with some summer stuff and then when the pansies are done, which they should be done in a month or so, then I could put something, oh, I know, <gasps> why not this? Okay, I'll put both the old pansies that have a little bit of life left in them and the new Dusty Miller, which has a lot of life left in them. I'll put them both in here and then it'll be extra full to start. As the pansies fade, the daffodils, not the daffodils, the Dusty Miller can take over. That's a really good idea. I do say so myself. All right, so let me get some soil in here. Running low on potting soil. I'm gonna put some flower tone fertilizer in here. Now, why am I using flower tone sometimes and biotone other times? Well, honestly, I don't know. I have them both. I got the flower tone for my annuals and I usually use biotone on perennials and shrubs. I think they're very similar to each other. I think I said this before in the video. Uh, all the Espoma products are really similar to each other. They're all organic, they're all, um, they all have some level of mycorrhizae and bacterium in them for the purpose of soil health and soil biology. Some of them have more of that stuff in it than others. Biotone has a lot. Uh, but plant tone and flower tone, they all have the biotone formula in it, at least to some extent. So um, anyway, flower tone's formulated for flower production. And since I'm doing annuals here, I figure I might as well do that. All right, so I think I'm gonna need a little bit more soil. All right, now I'm just gonna put this black and bloom salvia in the center. Um, I love this plant um, and its cousins. Last year, I think I may have mentioned this before. Last year I had, this is purple and bloom, what did I say? Last year I had black and bloom salvias out front and they were great. Um, this one is purple and bloom, but I love the colors on them. Um, the calyxes are this dark, 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 almost black color and then the flower petals are this really vibrant, vibrant, rich purple. So I'm loving that. Let me get this set into place here in the center of this pot. All right, let me go up and get my uh, containers with daffodils and pansies and get it started to be taken apart. There's this one. And there's this one. 
and there's this one. So. All right. I was thinking of just putting the white pansies in here, but these purple ones look really pretty too. So, I don't know, use what you got, right? I'm just gonna be an animal. Grab that out with my fingers. And I'm just gonna tuck these down in around here. same color. Just grabbed it with my hand and put it in the opposite side. Now, um, I'll grab some of these gorgeous purple ones. All right, I think I actually have two, maybe even three plants here. Maybe even four. I'm just going to plant them all as one big clump. Same thing with these. These are all going to go in as one big clump, however many there are. I did it in a plus sign shape. Uh, so I'm gonna see if I can fit in four white ones in between here. This is the most jamming of plants in here that I have ever done this season so far. So, in the garden answer tradition, I suppose. All right. There, full of pansies, purple and white pansies with the purple and bloom salvia. Now I said I was gonna be putting in um, the uh, Dusty Miller. <laughs> I forgot about that as I was planting. Now I have eight clumps of pansies in here. Eight Dusty Miller's gonna be way too many uh, when they're full grown. So I'm gonna see if I can slip in four of these starts of Dusty Miller. I think I will be able to because they're nice and small. They were in a 72 cell tray. So I'm gonna stick them in here, but I'm only gonna try to put in four of them. Because I think eight in this pot in the end would be way too many. So that when the pansies are all done, the Dusty Millers should be able to stay when I take the pansies out. Any luck. If my memory serves me, these Dusty Miller, I got them from Botanical Interest and they are the Silver Dust variety, I believe. I don't know what variety the pansies are, I just picked them up at the garden center for their color, white, purple, and then a mix of white and purple. And then I think I actually got them at Lowe's, to be wrong about that. All right, so this container is done. I need to water it in and then set it out front opposite where I put the other containers of this color. I'm going to water this after I get it out there. The plant stand I'm going to be using is kind of an unusual one. I picked this up at the thrift store, secondhand store, and it was a glass top table, but the glass was broken. And so I actually bargained with the purveyor of the store and I just bought the base of it. And so I use it as a plant stand in the garden. Okay, so what did you think of these blue containers filled with purple and white out here in the front? Tell me what you think. Personally, I'm loving it.
Now I can't really talk about spring containers without talking about these containers that I have up here on the front porch. You saw me put these together um, a couple of months ago, actually. I used one of the ready refill containers in the center that had daffodils, tulips, and uh, hyacinths in it. And now it's full of mosquitoes. Oh my goodness. Um, but also the same violets that I just used, not violets, pansies, the same pansies that I just used in that other container. So the pansies are going great. Um, they're still going strong. The bulbs, um, they're done. And then up in the urns, same again, uh, pansies with, these are uh, sweet peas. And the sweet peas are finally starting to take off. I planted a lot more than that of sweet peas, but I'm kind of glad that they didn't all grow because then it would be too much. Um, so these containers are going strong and I'm just gonna let them go strong as they are, I could choose to cut off this uh, bulb foliage at this point um, and plant the bulbs out into the landscape. If I have nothing to do one day, I may choose to do that. But for now, I think that these really look pretty. I love especially the urns with the sweet peas coming up um, inside of them. So I'm gonna leave these here for a while and then I'll do a summer arrangement um, once I feel like I know what I wanna do. Um, but as far as the summer arrangement goes, I'll probably play off of the colors that I put into the window box. By the way, today's Sunday. On Wednesday is when this window box fell to the earth. I didn't end up cutting it off. I should have trimmed off these plants. But they are recovering. So, yeah, looking all right. Back to these pots. I think if I can find them, I'm going to put one each truffle of pink gonfriuna in these square pots, I think. Um, and then... I don't know what else, maybe some of that sparkling amethyst verbena, if I can find it. I'll have to see what the garden centers have left at this point. But it's definitely gonna be purple and white again this year with maybe pops of pink. The color of this rhododendron is the color of pink that I love in the garden, which is also the color of the encore roses, encore azaleas that are struggling along. But I like that color so much, I'm trying to decide whether to pull those out and replace them or what to do with them. Anyway, so probably purple, white, and this shade of pink. Okay, I think that is going to be it for me today with the containers. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, you have any questions or, con or comments about my containers? Put them in the comment section down below. Let's have a chat. And tell me a little bit about what kind of containers you're doing. Um, do you have sun or shade or part shade? And uh, do you have a color theme? Do you have plants that you love, plants that you avoid? Let me know. Let's chat about it. Have a wonderful day in your garden, friends, and I'll see you again really soon. Bye-bye.